Hello, hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Pro. We're about to start a Zoom call with Eriko Nakamura, who's working at Dropbox. This time, we're going to talk about localization project manager role. Let's do it. We have Eriko here, and uh, thank you so much for joining, Eriko. And Eriko uh, has been working as a, a localization project manager at Dropbox for six years. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how did you end up becoming a uh, localization project manager? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you for having me today. This is really exciting. Um, I have been on the localization team at Dropbox for six years now. And for, for the past two years, I've been a localization project manager. Um, and I am currently based in the Bay Area, uh, working out of our headquarters, um, well, which is now home at the moment because of COVID. Um, but before that, I was working out of our Tokyo office as a Japanese language specialist. So um, I've taken on different roles within the team. Um, before that, I have been an in-house translator at a large corporation. So I've been doing localization for 10 plus years now, but I've taken on different roles within uh, the localization industry. Mm -hmm. So basically you started working at Dropbox as a translator before you transitioned into localization project management. Um, yes, kind of. So uh, what a language specialist does in any language is sort of not the exact translation work from scratch, but um, we work with translation vendors and translation partners that do our translation work for us. But we take that content and sort of make sure that the quality is high for a Japanese audience. And also I discuss with our sales teams, marketing teams, communications teams, growth teams, and make sure that the messaging we have in whatever content that we translated into Japanese for um, is catered towards our Japanese audience and not just a sort of a pure uh, translation from our English content, which was originally uh, catered towards our American audience. So it's not, it's about sort of the editing and reviewing and massaging the language so that um, it is in high quality. And for that, um, my role was the Japanese portion of that. So what is the difference between localization, internalization, and uh, translation. Translation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, people say a lot of different people, you know, use it interchangeably. And I know I understand it's really confusing. Um, so how I look at it and in general is internationalization is um, in software development. It's more of the engineering side of globalizing a content. So making sure your product and your source code of your product um, can be localized and translated into different languages, or making sure that you can support different currencies on your product or different date formats, um, things like that, that require engineering work to make sure that your product can be localized. So that's, internationalization, whereas localization and translation is more of the linguistic side of the work. So it involves, you know, the pure translation from the source language, for example, English into Japanese or English into different languages, and also localization. So um, what I did as a language specialist, making sure it's culturally sensitive to your audience, um, the format, uh, is appropriate in your business culture, for example, that's a part of localization. Um, we have a, we use, always use a pretty good example at Dropbox um, about a Dropbox product uh, costing almost around three cups of coffee. But that copy doesn't always translate well in different cultures if you don't drink coffee, you don't know how much a cup of coffee costs, right? Um, you might be drinking tea. Uh, you might just not drink coffee at all. So things like that, 
it's you don't always think about it, but that's a cultural aspect that needs to be changed. So um, that's a that's the more cultural and the linguistic side of globalizing a product. So it, internationalization is more engineering, and localization and translation is more linguistic. Is how I would categorize it. I see. So be able to work uh, as a localization project manager uh, for the Japanese market, you have to understand the culture of Japan, right? So you have to be like native or somewhat familiar with the with the culture. Yes, that becomes a very important part of your work. Um, and it was really beneficial for me to be sitting with the Tokyo team in Japan uh, and just talking to them about their day-to-day -day and who their customers were and um, what types of content that the, their customers liked. Um, just being on the ground and talking to the people there in Japan was really important for me to absorb um, what the local business culture was like and apply that to my day-to-day -day work. So yeah, I would say that um, having the cultural um, knowledge of your language or your locale is important. So I could become a localization project manager from um, on, on Russian market. <laughs> Let's say if I speak <laughs> Russian, right? <laughs> yeah. I understand like, okay, that word doesn't fit in here. Like it's, it's really offensive, for example. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just the translation, but sort of the cultural background. If you have that, you're you could be a language specialist. So let's talk about the technical part. Like, let's say that you have a project, like we need to localize a, um, a new feature, for example, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Dropbox. Um, as a localization project manager, how would you go about this process? So we begin by um, just being involved in the whole launch team and launching a feature involves many different teams. So um, it's usually a product manager that sort of leads the herd of people um, up to launch, but there's engineers involved, designers, UX writers, um, and um, sales and marketing people uh, that create content so that they can market this new feature or new product. So um, I go talk to them and discuss what the scope is, what the timeline of this launch looks like um, and just give them advice and sort of guide them around what the localization part of this development uh, process is. And a lot of times they don't, they, they all need know that they need to localize their feature uh, before launch, but many times they don't understand what that involves. So I come in, I explain to them about the translation process. Um, we have what we call a linguistic quality assurance step, an LQA, which is kind of like a checking the translation in context. So your uh, product, translated product is in high quality. Um, and trying to fix bugs with engineers and things like that. So there's a whole sorts of things that need to happen in the localization process. So I sort of guide the rest of the team through um, the localization process, what that involves um, and try to make sure that we have um, our feature in high quality in all languages and ship globally to our international users. So your part would be like just not just translating the product itself into a different language, but also deliver the message to the to the users in their own language, right? So as a project manager, it's mainly um, talking to my internal stakeholders, all the teams that mm -hmm. are developing the product, and also um, liaising with our translation vendors that does our actual translation of our product. So it's a lot of um, communication and um, collaboration, figuring out timelines, making sure things are done on time, making sure content is uh, done in good quality. So it's a lot of juggling content, um, prioritizing content and making sure things get done on time. Um, the quality and the messaging is reviewed and um, strategized by our language specialists.
So these are sort of the different roles that we take on on the team. We have project managers who does the operational side, um, talk, go talk to our product managers and engineers and our stakeholders, and also talk to our translation vendors to get things done. Whereas our language specialists are more focused on the language and the quality um, and make sure that uh, our customers in whatever language language or country um, likes our product and wants to use our product. So these are the two sort of main roles that we have on the team and we have different um, roles that we take on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so I have another question regarding the uh, LPM role itself, like you mm -hmm. as a project, uh, localization project manager, do you uh, solely work in the uh, in, in, on the project or you have a team that helps you out with that, like consists of other LPMs or how does it work? Mm -hmm. um, we do have several other LPMs on the team, but it's you, we are usually assigned one launch we, one LPM is usually assigned to one feature or one product launch. Let's say that you're launching the feature uh, into multiple countries. So that means that uh, multiple LPMs working on the same feature? No, actually. Um, so we usually try when we do launch a product or a feature, we try to do it globally in all of the 21 uh, non-American English languages that we support at Dropbox. But as a project manager, you are responsible for the entire launch of all languages. Mm -hmm. And the linguistic expertise, we get help from our translation vendors. When you go to work, um, probably from home right now, mm -hmm. what, is, what is your typical day look like? Like, is it a lot of meetings or is it a lot of looking into uh, content? Like, can mm -hmm. you describe that? Sure. So we are a very global team. So, um, some of us LPMs are based in uh, the San Francisco area, but we have a language specialist in Tokyo, another project manager in Dublin, and then more language specialists in Paris and Hamburg. So it, we're a when very sleep. <laughs> yeah, we're a very global team, and we're somebody's always working throughout the day. So I wake up to basically a full, you know, email, a list of emails. Um, so I catch up on my emails to figure out what was happening while I was sleeping. Um, and so I go, I look at new, new requests would come in while I'm sleeping. Um, vendors would ask me questions and things like that. So I basically go through all the emails in the morning. And um, in my case, I was working with um, a couple translation vendors that were based in Europe. So I would have calls with them in my morning um, and that could be about making sure that all of the jobs that I've been handing over to them are in progress and on time. And um, another thing could be I was running a program on the team to ensure that uh, our translated content was in high quality. So um, I was running this program where we would sample some of the translated content that was done by one vendor and give it to another vendor for them to check and give us like sort of like a third party feedback um, to make sure objectively um, our translation vendor was um, giving us great content. Mm -hmm. So I would talk, be talking to my European vendor in the morning around um, that program as well. So morning, I had, I usually have morning calls with the vendors. Um, another thing I, spend a lot of time on as a project manager is working on these the localization bugs that come up through these linguistic QA process. So once the linguists get a chance to look at their translated content in context, um, they find some linguistic or functional bugs in their language. So they raise them to me um, and I get a list of, it's basically like a spreadsheet with a list of all the bugs that needs fixing before launch. So I go through and sort of triage all the bugs um, to make sure that the bigger bugs are fixed immediately. 
um, the lower bugs or any of the linguistic bugs that we can just fix on our team um, gets fixed on our end. So a lot of bug triaging to make sure that our product, um, all the bugs on our product are addressed before a launch. And I spend a lot of time doing that as well. Um, and then we get a lot of, we have a Slack channel on our team and people can ask us questions about localization. And so we do spend some time answering questions on um, localization strategy, or sometimes people just ask me, how many languages do we support at Dropbox? And so uh, we, we do spend a lot of um, time answering questions um, that come from our fellow Dropboxers as well. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that you work a lot with the vendors and uh, um, if we take the in-house team, uh, whom do you work most with? Um, the in-house team as in the as Dropbox a, team? Yeah, like product managers, um, engineers. Okay, sure. Um, I work closely with the product managers just because they're usually in charge of um, a feature or a product launch. So they are the sort of the leader of the pack, trying to rally everybody to come together um, with bring their expertise to um, launch a particular feature. So um, product managers are usually the people that I collaborate with most because I bring to the team, to the launch team, the localization expertise and um, I guide the product manager and the rest of the team through the localization process. So I think it would be the product managers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what tools are, what tools do you use during your like localiza localization project? Mm -hmm. um, on our team, we use things like JIRA for project general project management. Um, a lot of requests come through um, in JIRA tickets that we process. We, um, being on the localization team, we also use what we call a translation management system or a TMS, which is like just a product that allows you to, um, it's a software that allows you to do translation work um, and have things, capabilities like translation memory or like having glossary uploaded or style guide uploaded. So it's a tool that allows us to um, upload the source English content and the linguist can do the actual translation in that content or in that tool. And then um, this tool will have a translation memory where they will save all of the completed translation. So if something similar comes in the future and we need to do a similar types of translation, we, the linguists don't have to do everything from scratch, but the translation memory will have your previously done translation memorized and they will pull it up for you so that the linguists can save time and also maintain consistency within the translations. So um, that's a big portion in terms of all the tooling that we uh, use on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, um, we're in Dropbox all day, every day, saving <laughs> files and editing files all the time. So we're definitely deep into Dropbox every day too. Let's talk about the people who are trying to get in into the localization project management. Um, can you tell us um, like what skills and what requirements are needed for a person who would like to become a uh, localization project manager? Um, you don't need a particular degree um, to be a project manager. Uh, I was myself was a linguist, a translator when I started being in the localization industry and sort of switched roles and now I'm a project manager. So um, you don't need a particular degree, but um, it would be great to um, have if you have if you can speak in other languages, that would be great but it's also not necessary. Um, but being interested in different cultures and languages and is always a plus. Um, but it's a lot about um, prioritizing and communicating with people and 
also evangelizing your work so that other people um, at the company knows what to do with you, how to collaborate with you. Um, and I think one of the key aspects of being a localization project manager and doing any work, I think, is having empathy. Um, a lot of the times, if you are talking to people that just speak English, um, it's hard for them to understand um, the importance of localization, importance of translating the product into different languages. But that's where you have to sort of be an advocate for, you know, the rest of the world, basically, and just have them imagine what if you didn't speak a word of French and all of this product was in French, would you use the product? And the answer likely will be no. So it's just having that um, empathy and the imagination of what if I didn't speak a particular language? What challenges will I face if, I, if that product was in that language that I don't understand? So um, it's, there isn't a pr one particular thing that you need or a degree that you have to have to become a project manager on the localization team, but I think having um, empathy and being able to share that and communicate that with others, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. So what I have understood that is that uh, having uh, a little bit of project management background can actually mm -hmm. help you to become a localization project manager. Yes, and it doesn't. You don't have to be um, a localization project manager. It, you could be um, coming from any project management or program management background, um, and that's very much applicable to um, an LPM role as well, because it's at the end of the day, it's all about juggling multiple things, trying to get things done on time, talking to people and prioritizing. So a lot of that is just um, project management and program management. That's interesting because recently I've been researching about the localization project management uh, certifications or mm -hmm. educational programs. And the uh, funny thing is that I found a few. <laughs> so guys, you don't have to go to school to be <laughs> a localization project manager. <laughs> Maybe just uh, if you get a certificate in project management will actually lead you to um, if you want to become a localization project manager. So if somebody is interested and wants to start, where should they start? I think there's multiple ways to get into the localization industry. Um, one is sort of becoming a translator. If you are bilingual or trilingual or multilingual, um, you can do that. You can start as uh, working on at the translation uh, vendor side. Um, and they have all, obviously linguists, reviewers, um, project managers, um, mm -hmm there as well. So that's a great way to get into localization. Can you um, mention a couple of companies that, you know, uh, the vendors? That people sure, might sure. There's bigger, there's really big companies. There's numerous, just so many language service providers out there in the world. And I've worked with many of them. Um, there are large uh, translation uh, language service providers. I'd say Places like Lionbridge, um, We Localize, um, Moravia. Yeah, there's there's so many different vendors to choose from, and um, they 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 all provide great service. I also wanted to mention about Moravia that they uh, employ you as a contractor into like high tech companies such as like Apple, for example. Mm -hmm. And you basically work yes. at Apple translating into a different language, mm -hmm. uh, but work for a different company, which is a great experience to start. Yes, with. absolutely. When I did my research, I saw a lot of positions in localization project management because a lot of companies, they're going global, especially like mm -hmm. when everything's online nowadays, yes. you know? So um, the glo being localization project manager is in high demand right now. So, and it's super interesting as well, like working on different cultures and languages, mm -hmm. is exciting. Yeah, I think it's, there's no downsize to localizing your product. The more you localize, the more users you will have. Yeah. And if you do a good job around it, you know, your product will be successful globally. So there's so many benefits to globalizing your product in your company. So 
Yeah, I think there there should be high demand, <laughs> in my personal opinion. Yeah, and we have another thing that、uh, we might not forget is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our viewers、um, will have a chance to receive a、um, consultation. I'm happy to chat with anybody、um, that's interested in the localization field. It's a pretty niche field,、um, mm -hmm. and so people, I'm sure, are curious about what we do on the localization team. And I've done a lot of chats with people actually、um, that are curious about localization and trying to get into the localization field, and just chat with them and explain to them what I do. So I'm、yeah. I'm definitely happy to do that. Leave your comment below with the questions about the localization project management role. So I will send them to Erico, and Erico will choose the most interesting ones, three, <laughs> three most interesting ones, and those people who had the most interesting questions、uh, will can get a、um, you know on a phone or on a Zoom meeting with with Erico. Thank you so much. I can't even express how much I'm thankful and grateful for you joining us today. And、uh, I'm wishing you a good luck、uh, in your、um, uh, localization project management journey. Thank you. And thank you so much again. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for viewing this, and thanks for an opportunity to chat about localization. This was great. Thank you.